Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be factoring a quartic polynomial. We have z to the fourth power plus 5z squared plus 9 and we're going to go ahead and factor this expression. Now this problem was suggested by one of my viewers that suggests quite a few problems on this channel. Thank you for your contributions. Highly educated trucker. So we're going to go ahead and factor this expression now. z to the fourth power plus 5z squared plus 9. I'll be presenting two methods. And the first method is just going to be a little painful. So bear with me on that. Let's start with the first one. So to be able to factor this, I'm basically going to turn this into an equation and solve it. So let's go ahead and set this equal to zero in order to make it an equation and then solve this equation because if you can find the solutions then we can find the factors. The factor theorem tells us if z equals z sub 1 is a solution then z minus z sub 1 is a factor and vice versa, right? So that's the property we're going to use. So let's go ahead and see how we can solve this equation. There's quite a few different ways to solve it which I'm going to talk about and to be able to solve this, I want to, since we only have even powers, this is called a biquadratic, as far as I know. So we're going to go ahead and do the following. Set z squared equal to another variable. How about t? Because t is a really good variable, right? This gives us t squared plus 5t plus 9, 5t. It's like t at 5, right? Okay, equals 0. That wasn't intentional, by the way. It just happens. And to be able to solve this equation, we can do different ways, adding, completing the square, or using the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula is more straightforward. Let's go ahead and use it. t equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 25, minus 4 times 9, which is 36. 25 minus 36 is negative 11. This is going to give us negative, I mean, square root of 11 times i. Because remember, uh, square root of negative 11 is not a real number, and that can be written as the square root of 11 times the square root of negative 1, and then this is a little bit of abuse of notation because negative 1 has two square roots, but bear with me, the plus minus sign will take care of everything. And then this is divided by 2a, which is 2. Awesome. So we got the t values, but guess what? We're looking for z values. So how do you turn this into z values? t is equal to z squared. So let's go ahead and set z equal to z squared. That means we're going to be solving two separate equations because z squared is equal to two different things. Let's go ahead and start with the plus sign. So let's write this as z squared equals negative 5 plus root 11i divided by 2. So from here, we're going to find the z values. We need to take square roots. And we talked about square roots of complex numbers. If you haven't seen the lecture videos, go ahead and check them out. I made... I think about nine lecture videos talking about pretty much everything on complex numbers. And square rooting them is fairly easy. Well, sort of, depends. Uh, obviously, you can write the z. There is two paths here, main, two main paths. You can replace z with a plus bi, which is the name of the channel, right? And then try to solve for a and b. Uh, but in this case, we're going to use a special uh, property of this expression. And first, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and multiply the top and the bottom by 2. And you'll see in a little bit why I'm doing it. By, by multiplying, you achieve two things. First of all, the denominator becomes a perfect square, which is nice. And the numerator is actually factorable. Or should I say, we can write it as a perfect square. So here's what we can do. Negative 10 and the presence of uh, square root of 11 tells me the following. I can write the negative 10 as negative 11 plus 1. And then this can be turned into perfect square. How? Let's see how that works. And of course, it's not always going to work nicely. But when it does, it does. So take advantage of it. Now, I do see that the square root of 11 is the real part. But I do need an i. So let's go ahead and write the negative 11. By the way, 1 is positive. So its square root would be positive 1 in this case, but this is our negative number, so we're going to replace it with 11i squared. 
and then this is gonna give us what we want because you can basically write this as follows this is basically square root of 11 i squared plus 2 times the square root of 11 i plus 1 divided by 4 and hopefully now you can see that this is square root of 11 i plus 1 squared and of course you could write the one first doesn't matter we can always switch them around now z squared has two values or should I say z has two values right because when you take the square root, you're going to have to consider the plus minus sign. So here's the values we're going to get from here. 1 plus root 11i over 2 is going to be one of the solutions like z sub 1. And then z sub 2 is going to be 1 minus negative 1 minus. Actually, it's the opposite, right? Not just the conjugate over 2. Okay? So those are the solutions that we get from the first case. But there are two cases. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second one with the minus sign. Remember, we did get plus minus sign here, so we're going to have to consider both. We consider the plus sign, now we're going to do the, uh, the other one, which is, uh, let's go back to the original negative 5 minus root 11 i over 2. We're going to do the exact same thing, so double the top and the bottom, and then go with the perfect squares, and guess what this is going to be this time. Because of the negative 10, again, I'm going to write this as negative 11 plus 1 plus 2 root 11i but this time notice that uh, the 2 root 11 is positive so instead of writing it as you know something minus sign actually let me go ahead and check the or the first one uh, yeah i went with the plus sign first so i'm supposed to go with the minus sign next so this is supposed to be a minus sign and then that's going to give me a minus sign here as well. Let's go ahead and fix that too. I just realized I did the same thing twice. Now, this is going to be a minus sign again in front of the 2 root 11i, which is 2ab. So I kind of need to write this as 1 minus root 11i squared. Makes sense? And of course, this should turn into a 4 as well. I made two mistakes. Sorry about that. Let's go ahead and fix them real quick. And this is going to be a 4. And now z squared can be written as what? 1. And we can go ahead and take the square roots from here. So this is z squared, right? And now z is going to be 1 minus root 11i over 2. And then opposite of this, which is negative 1 plus root 11i over 2. And of course, I'm going to call these z sub 3 and z sub 4. Make sense? Great. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, be a little picky here and pick two expressions, z sub 1 and z sub 3. So, notice that z sub 1 is 1 plus root 11i over 2, and z sub 3 is 1 minus root 11i over 2. What's so special about the, that choice is that these two are conjugates. They are related. So, notice that z sub 1 plus z sub 3 is equal to 1 half plus 1 half, which is 1, and z sub 1 times z sub 3 is, remember, the numerator is supposed to give you sum of two squares, not difference, because you're multiplying two conjugates. That should be 1 plus 11, which is 12, and then divide it by 2 times 2, which is 4, so that will be a 3. Make sense? Okay, great. So we got the following. From Vieta's formulas, we have an equation, a quadratic equation, whose sum of roots is 1 and whose product is 3. So that gives us z squared minus the sum, which is 1z, plus the product, which is 3. So that's going to be one of the equations. And if you do the exact same thing on z sub 2 and z sub 4, you're going to get another factor, which is z squared plus z plus 3. And this will bring us to the end of the first method. And let's go ahead and talk about the second method real quick. And the second method is actually really quick. So we have this expression and we're trying to factor it. Let's just go with the quartic, but notice that we can turn this into a perfect square just by adding z squared and subtracting it. Notice that I added z squared here inside the parentheses and then subtracted it afterwards. So now I have a perfect square z squared plus 3, and then I subtract z squared, and then this is factorable by difference of two squares, and that gives us the exact same solution as before. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, 
Be safe, take care, and bye-bye.